Hey everyone, we are continuing our expert series of the week and we have Matt Seamus with us. With us. How you doing, sir? Uh, my favorite time of the week, Michael. <laughs> You're so sweet to say that. It's not true, but it's really nice to hear. Thank you. <laughs> hey, so what I thought we would do today is uh, let's just talk about our business. I think both of us have deals in escrow. Uh, I think we're both evaluating more deals than maybe we were 60 days ago when we were in the mix of this thing. Yep. Uh, so why don't we start with your big Santa Barbara project? We've, we've talked about it now, I think, three weeks in a row. Uh, why don't we talk about where that is, and then we'll get into some others. Yeah, eight units in Santa Barbara, uh, multifamily, good rental location, um, a seller that's owned the property forever, um, tenants that have lived there forever. Yeah. Um, we did our property inspection a couple weeks ago. Um, properties in it, good location, but it's in, you know, it's in need of a major facelift yeah. um, and some infrastructure too. So the good news is um, there's room in the deal for all those things to happen for you to pay for them. Um, the, you know, and, and for you to profit at the end of it, the um, news that I won't call it bad news, but the news that requires interpreting or at least requires, you know, a creative kind of, solution is um, the there were there was more in our property inspections that we uh, expect than we expected including uh, some mold and asbestos issues oh that's new yep um, and there is a, an ongoing environmental issue mm -hmm. not related to this property but right. in the area um, and so there's this um, basically the groundwater, there was dry clean. This is interesting because like, we don't think about this, but as an, as a real estate investor, you're going to run into this at some point. Right. Um, if you're, if you're buying things that are near enough to retail, uh, there were dry cleaners back in the sixties. They dumped, um, this chemical, uh, PCE basically in the, in the ground, it seeps down into the groundwater over time. And then it, uh, the vapors release from the groundwater up oh, um, wow. into, you know, whatever's above and, you know, on the surface. And so you have this kind of groundwater plume that has uh, this nasty chemical right. that where the vapors kind of come up into, into the living spaces of several different uh, buildings. So, and commercial buildings as well. So it's actually fairly common. Um, you know, there's ongoing investigations about this stuff all over the country. Um, <laughs> the trick is, are you as the property owner liable? Um, and if so, can you quantify that liability? Because you really, you know, you want to know what you're getting into. Um, and then for us, uh, resale value, when we go to sell this, um, you know, is it going to be an issue for the future buyer? Yeah. So real hairy issues, but again, if you can solve an issue like this, um, then you can create some value for yourself because there's very few people that are willing to or able to solve an issue like this. Right. Um, and there's also some, you know, it's, it's a, it's a good, for me, it's a good reminder of um, the concept of information asymmetry, just a fancy way of basically saying like, you know, you and I are negotiating, Michael, do you know more than I do or do I know more, know more than you do? Right. Uh, because one of us has leverage. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't know the exact same things. Yep. And one of the, one of the opportunities here may be if we can go through our due diligence and if we believe that uh, yes, there is an environmental issue, but the liability for the property owner is low or nil. Um, if that's true and the property owner knows there's an environmental issue and believes that the liability for the property owner may be meaningful that's information asymmetry right. that allows you to go uh, negotiate, um, you know, for a better price for yourself. So we're kind of in that, in that phase of um, starting to in initiate the conversation for uh, price reduction and a couple other, you know, yeah. there's really three different options. There's you keep the liability um, even after the sale, there's reduce the price enough that, you know, it makes sense for us to take on the liability or there's, um, if you're willing to do some kind of seller financing and um, make the deal make sense for us, then, uh, you know, then we can probably pay the most we can and we might be willing to take on the liability. So there's a few different paths 
that we're exploring going down right now. That seller financing one is coming back. I seem to re- remember talking about that a month ago or so. That's, that's well, and this is, but this is a, yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> uh, and we, you know, now it's, it's, at a, it's at a moment where we may not do that. We may not be able to do the deal without seller financing. Exactly. Yeah. Because there may not be a bank that wants to step in as a first position given everything. So, so what happened with the mold and asbestos? Is that just like it's old acoustic ceilings and there's asbestos there and is there mold behind the shower or something or? Cause that can mean lots of things. Yeah, we're still, we're still investigating. Um, I don't have a clear answer on, on either of them yet. Okay. But we're getting uh, quotes on the asbestos remediation and the, the extent of the mold issue. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those properties that just hasn't been properly maintained the interiors yeah. at least have not been properly maintained. Yeah. And so you just have some, you have some tenants that, you know, they're, the bathrooms and kitchens are the primary problems, as you would expect, of course, uh, for moisture. But man, there's a couple, like one of these tubs was uh, pretty gnarly. Yeah. Like uh, hard, to, hard to believe someone was showering in there, let alone even thinking about taking a bath. Yeah. So we don't know yet. Yeah, it's amazing. I've seen some pretty wacky things, tenants living somewhere for 10 years. And you go, why don't they call anyone? Well, they don't call because they don't want to, they don't want to, I don't know, piss off the landlord and raise their rent. So they just suck it up. I mean, that's pretty common. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of reasons why you may not, yeah. but yeah, that's, that's certainly one of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, some of the tenants that were in this property, they've been there since the nineties. Yeah. And then the other thing that is um, interesting, just given your plan for this building, right? Uh, you probably expected, maybe you don't expect asbestos, but it was built in the sixties. So you probably expected something. Yeah. Um, and mold, right? When you have tenants living there 30 years, you probably expected something. But again, your plan doesn't change. You were going to remodel everything anyway. You were going to yeah. touch every surface. Uh, but it does give you negotiating power. And it actually may help you vacate the building. It so, may. Yeah. It may. That's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, um, you know, we are, uh, we're very heavy right now in the negotiation phase. Yeah. So, uh, we're looking for every, you know, any opportunity for leverage that we might have. And this deal just has it, you know, there's lots of little nuances. So how old is the seller? He's in his eighties. And he's, does he have kids? Do you know? Yes. Yeah. He yeah. does not Cause... want them to be owning or operating real estate. Yeah. But is he willing to let them be a bank? Yeah. And that's the, that's the whole pitch. Yeah, is, of course you know, for seller financing. I mean, and, and actually in this case, you know, maybe I'm selling it, but in this case, this is actually a deal where seller financing may be the best route for the seller because we actually may be able to get him approximately the same cash flow he's getting today exactly. on the building. He's in first position. We're adding money to the property, improving it, which mm-hmm. further secures his interest in the property. Yep. And then he's got a, you know, I don't know, maybe a five-year note so that he knows he has an exit at some point in the future. It's mm-hmm. not open-ended um, and, and he doesn't take on any liability going forward. So it's actually one instance where, you know, it, it actually may be the best route forward. Yeah. And frankly, there may be a reason to even do a 10 or a 20 year note. I mean, not saying he'll want to do that, but at, at, at some point, 80 year olds die, right? I mean, let's, it's not morbid. It just happens to all of us. And maybe what would be interesting for him is if you just collect interest in principle while he's alive, his tax burden is this much, right? Yeah. And then he passes on. Now, you know, it, we currently have stepped up basis. Who knows if that exists you know, a year from now, if there's a change in the presidency, but let's assume we still have it. Then that transitions to the kids. There's a stepped up basis to current value. And then, you know, maybe there's no tax liability for them. I don't know. I mean, you have to yeah, talk exactly. to a tax guy, but that's no, what it I, feels I, like. I think that's exactly how, how it could work. So the trick is like, you know, you, you kind of, it, it can be tricky when the person selling you the solution is the one that also will benefit from it. Like it's nice to, if you could have a third party that could articulate the benefits, um, yeah. you know, to him, but we'll, we're going to do, we're going to do what we can here. Well, the, the, So I've done, a, I don't know, a bunch. I've done several. I bought 50 doors 
from sellers in their 70s or older here in the last two or three years. And basically, I ask them two questions. One of them you've already hit. What cash flow are you getting today? Hey, I can match that or even in some cases do better, right? And then just like you said, you had that one nailed. The other one I ask them is, how are you going to pay the taxes? Have you thought about that? Right? Because he's selling for cash, right? He's not 1031ing or anything. No. That's so he, he's going to eat half a million bucks in taxes. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. how, how does that feel? Right. <laughs> I could, I, I could make that go away or at least delay it and make it, you know, yeah. $10,000 chunks. That's what I'd be asking. Yeah, that's right. No, I think that's, I think that's totally valid. Cool. So let's talk about other deals. Are you evaluating anything else? Well, tell me before, before ah. I go there, tell me what you're working on. So we just, so I have a lot of stuff. So we've, um, we're in contract to sell one of our pride of ownership flips in what we call the tower district. Uh, we bought it and uh, we bought it in late December, January. We moved the tenant in mid February. Then, then Rona hits, right? Health crisis hits. I decide uh, I don't know where my tenants, um, if they're going to pay. So I don't want to sell something that could impact a potential buyer. So I pull everything off and I say, you know what, we're going to go two months and see what happens. And this tenant makes six figures actually works for PG and E has his mom in the back unit. Cause it's a house and a mother-in-law unit. So I felt good about it, but I still didn't want to sell it until I knew. Yeah. So they paid rent three months in a row. We then listed it or I wanted the person, re, you know, people that follow me go, Hey, I want to buy one. So I called him. He, he bought it. We're going to close next week. So that's two twenty five. That's that helps him helps us. Uh, I have another one that just finished remodeling. Tenant moves in Monday. Then we'll look to sell that. That'll go out at 160. Uh, that three house combo that we've talked about a couple of times. I've just remodeled the big house. It's done, dialed in. We just got a section eight tenant approved at 1276. My guess is they move in by next Friday, just given the paperwork process, which means then I need to focus on the two little houses. I didn't want to do that while I was doing the big house because they're still, the little ones are paying and I wanted them to watch my, you know, 40 or $50,000 remodel. Uh, so that's good. Um, then what do I have? I'm buying some stuff. So I just bought a house on fourth street via probate. That took like nine months. Mm. Um, the last three months I delayed it. We had it agreed basically at hundred. It's like one one but I didn't know where the market was going in February, March. So yeah. I delayed, I delayed, delayed, delayed. I now feel really good. Fresno market is screaming. I could list really? this thing today for 140 with boards on the window and it probably would sell. Wow. Um, we're going to spend 30 ish. My contractor's going in today to get a bid, but we may sell that for 180 to 200. So I feel good about that. Uh, we have an owner finance deal that came back. They, they got squirrely in January. Uh, they came back and said, okay, we'll, we'll talk. So that, that will likely happen. And there's one more I'm chasing. Where is it? What one is? Oh, it's a two house combo deal. It's actually a duplex. Uh, the main unit's rented for 1350. The back unit's vacant. I can rent the back unit for 900 all day long. It's two meters. It's a huge, it's a half, half acre city lot in, in two different entrances. It's like two houses, oh. um, two different addresses. Uh, so we're going to buy that probably for 190. I will fill the back unit and then I'll sell it for 250. So lots of stuff going on now. And like three weeks ago, or maybe four weeks ago, not much. Yeah. yeah. The market's on fire. I mean, it's crazy in Fresno right now. Sounds like you're, you're opting for some sales as opposed to some refis and holds. Yeah. I'm not really refining anything. I got a bunch of stuff that's free and clear. The other stuff I have has sub 6%. I can't get the cheap rates, right? Residential rates. I can't get threes because I have too much property. So there's only one apartment building that I'm looking at refining. It's a six and a half percent. Um, in fairness, I probably have to spend 50 grand in capital improvement so that another bank would come in. So I'm delaying that one, but that's the only debt that I have that's above six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't need any more cash. So there's no cash out refi going on. Um, still looking to add some like that, like that owner finance deal will keep. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm basically adding owner finance deal so I can structure payments and hold for the long term. So let me ask you this. Sure. Um, if you, rewind, I don't know, five years, 10 years, whatever makes mm -hmm. sense, three years, I don't know. Okay. And imagine just the stretch of stuff that you're doing, like take a snapshot of what you're doing right now, the volume, the, yeah. uh, the level of sophistication. Um, and then 
rewind five years ago and ask yourself, um, is this like, how different does that look from what you were doing five years ago? Oh, it's night and, and day. Yeah. Okay. That's where I was going. I'm curious how you think about that. I mean, the amount of progress that you can make in a relatively short period of time is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if I go back to January 1st of 2018, so that's like two and a half years, literally. Um, I was still working and I'd planned to be working until I was 50 at that point. I was 45. Uh, so I was just a buy and hold landlord. I'd had four or five properties a year, buy out of the MLS, nothing sophisticated. I then have that event a month later in February and I'm out. And then, yeah, then I, then, then I pick up basically what people call flipping. I realize I have a a niche, or at least I want to create a niche that's unique. I want to buy slumlords and flip only to landlords. I don't want to deal with FHA buyers. I want to help Silicon Valley types buy solid rentals, which is really cool now, given that Fresno is growing even faster. Um, that's cool. Then I find a way to get more private money. You know, I've borrowed two and a half million bucks in the last two years and repaid uh, all but 2.1. The other four is existing debt on buildings that'll be ref that'll be paid off in two to three months. Um, yeah, it's amazing. We've done, we've, uh, I've partnered up with some amazing wholesalers and full-time real estate entrepreneurs to do some marketing, got deals that way. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. I haven't thought about that. I haven't thought, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Thank you for that. That was a good question. I, I haven't <laughs> thought about it that way. I just keep moving forward. I, I don't look backwards. <laughs> no, but you gotta, you gotta celebrate some, some wins and, Yo, you're and right. even, even small wins and just acknowledge the progress. Cause it's real. If you put your head down and keep working, um, you know, and you've got, you've gained a lot, 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 rep, a lot of repetitions over that period of time. Yeah. Uh, the world starts to open up a little bit more. You see even more opportunity, um, and so I, I, I think it's helpful to look back occasionally and just, I appreciate that I was, yes, you were right. And I actually write that in my freaking book about something I made a mistake is I just kept moving forward and I never celebrated the wins. I had to wake up and take my own advice. <laughs> well, crazy. What about you? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, similar, I think, um, you know, I, for us, it's more around, um, moving into new asset classes and being able okay. to analyze deals um, of any, you know, of any asset class and in, in different markets, quickly coming to decisions um, and, you know, being able to quickly say no to most things yeah. uh, without, because we've seen it before, we've, uh, we've gone through the analysis before, um, you know, just kind of building up your bank of deal breakers or red yeah. flags or, or things that you say, well, um, environmental issue. Yes. Like definitely red flag, right. but that also means there might be an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go dig into it. So, um, yeah, I think the level of sophistication for us and for me personally has definitely increased. I think the way that we communicate with our, you know, investors and, and the people, like, you know, stakeholders, I think is, yeah. um, you know, is, is meaningfully, improved over even the last couple of years. Um, yeah, but we're, we're, you know, that's, that's one thing that we have in common, right? We're continuing to, uh, make progress, improve, get better. Yeah. Um, you know, be critical of what you've done in the past. So you don't repeat your, you know, the same mistakes. That's, uh, that's kind of one thing that we definitely share. Oh yeah, for sure. I, I always tell people mistakes are okay. It's, it's, it's the repetition that kills you, right? It's the repeated mistake that I will not accept. Mm. Um, those are expensive, right? When you repeat them, because the first one's a lesson, right? Yeah. So you're, you're supposed to learn from it. It's when you repeat them or somebody on your team repeats them. Those hurt. Those hurt. Those are embarrassing. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so what, what else are you looking at? I mean, you, are you starting to toy with anything else? Any other deals? So we have one other property in contract. Oh, um, yeah, I forgot. yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have one other property in contract. We, we just got it. We just got that signed uh, late last week. Okay. Well, so I, that's not the Texas multifamily or what, what is this one? No, this is a industrial deal, triple net, single tenant industrial deal in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. All right. So, yeah. So the two things, and we, this, um, there's a market in Milwaukee called Menominee Falls, uh, really big industrial market, low vacancy, oh. 
really high quality tenants, uh, pretty stable market. So it's kind of a boring, like cash flow oriented deal, mm-hmm. um, which is what we are excited about right now. Um, we kind of have two categories of deals that we're looking at. One are these boring cash flow heavy deals. Um, you're not going to have a ton of appreciation, uh, or you shouldn't expect it at least, but you have um, seven or eight or nine percent cash on cash return that is pretty bankable. Yeah. You have a long term lease. You have great tax benefits, um, and so that's do me a, f- do me, a f- do me a favor. You and I both know what triple net is, but let's assume a wa- somebody watching this has heard triple net, but they don't really know what it means. So could you yeah. explain to them what what it really means? Yeah. So triple net, you know, is uh, a lease structure, and it's commonly used for. Uh, like freestanding retail, uh, industrial properties, and some office properties. Triple net means that the tenant pays for all of the operating expenses of the property. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, uh, let's say you, um, let's say Jack in the Box is the tenant. Okay. And Jack in the Box will typically have a long-term lease maybe a 30 year lease Yep. and they might have like five, 10 year extension options as well. So they could be there forever. (laughs) Um, And they may have a, they likely have a triple net lease, which means the landlord has very limited responsibility. Uh, If there's a, anything that goes wrong inside or outside of or around the property, the tenant pays for the landlord doesn't even know if there's a roof leak. The landlord doesn't even necessarily know if the, Uh, something is being remodeled on the interior. Um, They own the property and they own the land, but the tenant is responsible for everything else, including property taxes, insurance payments, and all of the operating expenses. So that's the the only, yeah, the only thing uh, an owner of a Jack in the Box in this example, they will be paying is their mortgage. Yeah, that's right. If they have one. If they have one, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so now that's the extreme end of the spectrum for triple net. There's, mm-hmm. you know, you can back off that a little bit. Some leases, maybe the landlord is responsible for the roof um, or the foundation or, or whatever, okay. but that's, that's kind of the general model. So limited landlord responsibility, limited landlord uh, management mm-hmm. need. And that's, yeah. you know, that's and there's a, there's a full on industry that just trades triple net properties because again, they're the closest thing to a bond out there. Right. I mean, there's, there are, are, there are agents that only look to buy or only look to list and sell triple net buildings. That's all they do. Yep. That's exactly right. And so, uh, and it's a huge industry, particularly for people um, maybe that are older and more uh, you know, they've gone through um, they're not interested in capital appreciation as much as preservation and cash flow. Right. Um, and so you have, and, and 1031 exchanges on the, when you're looking for a replacement property and you owned a small apartment building and you did well on it, but it, you know, crushed your soul for the last <laughs> few years. Been there. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe you look to go do something really passive. Um, and, and so that, that's a, it is a big industry. What we look for are, opportunities where you have the triple net lease infrastructure and you have a quality tenant, but there's some arbitrage opportunity during your ownership period. Okay. Um, There's some way to add value during your ownership period. Hmm. So um, it's kind of like buying a high cash flow bond to use your term with an opportunity for some upside at some point in your ownership. Okay. So I'm guessing well, there's only two levers to pull and really there's only one. And that is, are they getting close to a lease true up or extension of, or the end of their first term? Or it's gotta be about rent, right? Cause the only one, other one is expenses, but you don't really own any of those expenses, at least in there's a, Yeah, there's a couple. So, but they generally do revolve around the rent payment and the term of the lease. Okay. So, um, you know, on this property, the, the primary lease goes for seven more years. Okay. And then they have an extension option. Um, so at that extension option in, in this lease, uh, the price is not dictated. So it's ah. a, the price is to be negotiated. So when you buy a property, which what we look to do is you buy a property that has below market rents. Yep. 
um, because we're buying based on a multiple of the cash flow that produces. Sure. If you're buying something for below market rent, you're buying it at a relatively low price when you look at price per square foot and replacement mm -hmm. costs and things like that. Um, and, and then you go look to, uh, you know, over time, uh, over the next seven years, uh, hopefully rents continue to increase in the market. Mm -hmm. And hopefully at that point in seven years, when everyone looks around, you realize, whoa, we're like 20% below market here. Mm -hmm. um, we have an opportunity to even keep the tenant below market, yep. but let's bring them back up to like maybe 90 or 95% of market. And so that's one, that's like the simplest lever uh, to pull. So I'm curious, um, you and I have never talked about Milwaukee before as a market you were looking at. Uh, is that, was this deal brought to you because again, you have networked with brokers in the triple net space and you let them know what you're looking for or was it, how, how did, how'd you find the deal? Yes. Uh, is the short answer. Um, there's a, there's a particular broker that we've been working with for about a year, but we haven't done a deal with yet. Um, he likes to, he wants to, basically he, we know him, he's a personal relationship and he, he does a lot of these triple net deals. Okay. So he's very active. Um, but he now is bringing us the deals that he wants to personally own. And because he sees us as an opportunity to build up his equity ownership over time and kind of cherry pick the, the deals that he really loves. And then, um, oh, roll his cool. commission into the deal right. and, 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 uh, and operate the deal potentially too. So there's some, there's some synergies there. Win-win right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's cool. So again, this is a guy whose day job is triple net deals. He sees pick a number 20, 50 a week, whatever it is. And yeah. now he's going through it with a fine tooth comb going, Ooh, I like that one. He brings it to you. He goes, Hey, take my three points, put it in, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you're just going to get the cherries to pick from. So that's pretty, pretty much. Oh, um, that sucks. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's so awesome, now, you know, that, that's just the starting point. And that just of course. helps you not filter through, you know, hundreds yeah, of deals. He's doing it. Yeah. He's doing it. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. We hope that this first deal works out really well because yeah. if it does, we're going to have, we're going to go replicate. Yeah, of course. I mean, I don't know what it is, but it's got to be something close to this. For every hundred he looks at, he likes two or three. Yeah. And he bring and then you select one. But if yeah. he's the kind of guy that looks at a hundred and he likes eighty, then you got a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. We, we need yeah, to fix right. that filter. Well, but we've all and we've also, to be fair, we got close on a deal with him recently, um, and we have looked at maybe 10, five or 10 other deals together that we collectively okay. decided to pass on. Nice. So, so when you do a deal like this, this triple net deal, will you go get a 50% LTV or will you, you just bring in cash or I, I've never done a well, loan on that. We'll get, um, so we're getting loan quotes now. I mean, we're getting any, we're got actually getting up to 75% LTV. Wow. Okay. I mean, they cash flow so strong right. that, um, you know, like this is going to be a, seven and a quarter cap, something okay. like that. Cash flow is pretty strong. Um, yeah, so get debt service in, coverage is high. Interest rates are in the fours for you? Oh my God, threes? Yeah. Wow, that, that's positive leverage right there, positive carry as they say. So that's the, other, that's the other interesting point about these stabilized triple net. In our case, we like industrial. We yeah. don't, we're not looking at retail or office. We oh, like industrial. Totally get it. But the spread between your interest rate and the cap rate um, yeah, is, double. is your cash flow. Yeah. You know, so if we can get a loan at, um, you know, it's probably actually, actually going to be three and a half, 375. Yeah. Um, you know, that's a, that's a meaningful spread between Absolutely. a seven and a quarter cap rate and a three and a half percent interest rate on your mortgage. There's a lot of cash flow to go around there. So you can, <sighs> the bank or the lender can afford to increase their proceeds to maybe 75% because there's yeah. a lot of cash flow. Yeah. I mean, the answer is how many of those do you want to do? And the answer is all of them. Yeah. yeah. And so this is why we, you know, part, a big thing in real estate, at least for us is the risk adjusted return. Yes. And, you know, so we are right now dialing down our risk appetite. Mm -hmm. um, and so, is this going to produce a 20 IRR? No, 
That's not this deal. No, well, that's but not this market. Probably yeah. Gonna, yeah. No, that's correct. But it's probably going to get to a 13. Um, Nothing wrong with that. And no, yeah. and produce really consistent cash flow. Yeah. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There are risks. There, sure. There's always risks. Uh, but we feel like they're they're relatively low here. And so that's the, this is the, you know, honestly, this is the profile of deal that I'm most interested in right now because I feel like it's the lowest risk. Yeah. Still got a really nice return. Yeah, Interest I, rates are extremely low. I think that is so wicked smart. Industrial is the strongest part of the, of the commercial space today. Score. Um, I do see a lot of pain. And frankly, we, we talked about this before we hit record, just to touch on it briefly. I think there's a lot of hidden pain or delayed pain out there. Yeah. Uh, and I think that could, the delay could, could go on six to eight quarters. So we're not going to do nothing during that time frame. So I think doing, doing, you know, deals like this make perfect sense. You know, I think that's the smartest thing to do. You still got to be in the mix. You still got to be doing something. You got to watch the market. And then when we see pain pop up, we'll see if we want to change. Cause once the risk profile changes and you can go get deep discounts, you know, maybe you'll change. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, but for now, yeah, for us, risk is off. We're not interested in high risk things. Risk is off. I like that. You know, we'll go. We'll go do a simple kind of boring deal. Yeah. Um, and you know, the other thing is, you're in the same position. I think this is the only way to be. We do not have to transact. Exactly. We don't. I don't. I do not have to do a deal. Absolutely no. not. No. That's okay. Yeah. So, so that's. I, I'm in the same way. Risk off. Um, no price discovery, nothing going on. If I don't, yeah. The deals that we're doing now have huge spreads, multiple exit points. Um, and again, if, if they don't like the owner finance deal, if they, they play with me a little bit like they did last time, I just walk. I'm like, no, nope, I don't need it. Come back later. It's fine. So it's a, it's a nice place to be. So very cool. Yep. I'm excited for you. When, uh, when are you going to fly out to Milwaukee or do you not even do that for a triple net deal? No, we will. We will. <laughs> I know we will. <laughs> we will. It's, uh, we might. So Dan, my partner might be the one that goes out, but we'll, okay. what we do is we'll go get, we've already ordered our third parties. Um, so that's like property condition assessment. We'll do a roof inspection. We'll do a, uh, we, we probably won't pay for a zoning inspection. We'll just do that on our own. Uh, and there's like two or three others. We got, you know, all to survey. Yeah. Um, so you'll spend five good. grand. Probably 10. 10, okay. Probably 10 grand on our inspections. Um, and then what we'll try and do is we'll get, we'll get those back mm -hmm. and make sure that we're like thumbs up, mm -hmm. green lights. Yep. And then we'll go visit the property. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Well, this is fun, man. I, uh, this was a fun conversation. I love that you made me look back. Thank you. I got to do that more. Uh, and you're right. I, I actually should look for some triple net deals in Fresno. So um, yeah, I think this is cool stuff, man. Thank you very much, Matt. All right, Michael. Thanks for having me. Of course.